Now, you state there that um, Jesus cannot, con cannot be called God because he is a racial God. He was a tribal Jew. Hold it, hold May it, I please brother, read please, the context? He did not say that in his lecture. I, I, I insist. I'm sorry. That is no, relevant. No, I'm sorry too. I I'm asked about this lecture. To topic. No, I asked about this lecture. Please, can I, can did I appeal? Did he mention that in his lecture tonight? Can I appeal that? You can, you can see that separately. I asked, did he, did he mention that in his lecture tonight? Did he? Look, Mr. Did Didat, he mention it in his lecture tonight? Did Mr. Didat prepare his lecture before tonight or not? No, I say, did he mention it in his lecture tonight? He did not. Did, did he Could prepare, I have the next question, sorry, please? Did he prepare his no, lecture I'm before sorry. not? No, I'm sorry. No, next question, please. You did I, not obey. I'm not going to give you a question. I can't I've really said pertaining that. to the lecture what he has said tonight. Thank you. The next question, please. John, I'm not going to allow another question. Eh? I'm sorry. I thought it was John. Sorry. Next question, please. I'm sorry. Next question, please. Sorry. Can, can I please appeal to it? To Mr. Didat, no, I, I, I will tell Mr. Didat also to sit still because I am in the chair here. The next question, please, because you seem to want to work up the emotions. Concerning Jesus being called the Son of God and the scriptures that you went to this evening, tons of sons, uh, in Mark chapter 14 and verse 60, and I appreciate you knowing our scripture, uh, verse 60 and following, uh, they, that's Jesus standing before the, the council in his judgment. They asked him if he was the son of God, and he said, you say that I am. And then they asked him further, and he says, in essence, in, the, in his language, yes, I am. Then the high priest began to tear his clothing and accuse him of blasphemy and say, what further witness do we need? So didn't he take his claim at that point to be the son of God as something more than just saying, I'm one like everybody else because of the reaction of the high priest? If you remember that trial, that midnight trial, you're referring to, before the trial, the chairman of the Sanhedrin, he had already passed a verdict. And the verdict was, it is expedient that one man die for the nation. So they were intent by hook or by crook to do away with the man. Because this man was a danger. You see, just about 24 hours before he had marched on to Jerusalem, he had ex upset the money changers' tables. He had whipped the people in the temple. Now, this young man, if things go out of hand, there would be a danger. So he said, it is expedient. Not it is right or wrong, it is good or bad. It is expedient that this one man should be put away. So they had that midnight trial. And you read the trial. They brought false witnesses against him. One after another. And they couldn't tell in the evidence, if you remember. They couldn't tell in the evidence. So Jesus sees the farce that this trial was. So he says, I speak openly to the world. I ever thought in the temple and in the synagogue, whither the Jews always gather, and in secret have I said nothing. In other words, I would never say anything in secret, which I was not prepared to say in public. No secret doctrines with him. So you can bring hundreds of witnesses to testify. Why is it that you are getting false witnesses, and even false witnesses can't tell you? Now, the argument he put forth was so potent. They had no witnesses. So the officer standing by slapped him in the face to shut him up. The third degree. You remember? So Jesus says, if I have spoken evil, be a witness of the evil. But if well, why smitest thou me? What are you hitting me for? Right. So you can see from the word go, the whole thing is a farce. Hook or by crook, they want to condemn the man. An innocent expression like son of God. Look, Jesus is telling you in John chapter 10. Is it not written in your law? I said, ye are gods. Look, this is son of God. I said, he's got them by the tens. But people are called gods. And you, in your language, you're not finding fault with that. In other words, look, this is the genius of our language. When we talk like that, we don't mean literally. You see? So now, since they were looking for trouble, he said, art thou the son of God? Means a righteous man. You remember on the cross when he cried out? The centurion, what did he say? He said, here is the son of God. The other gospel writer says, what did he say? He said, this is, the son of, uh, this is the son of God. The other one says, this is the righteous man. So righteous man and son of God are used synonymously by two writers of the, of the New Testament. The same expression, one says he is the son of God, and the same man is supposed to have said he is a righteous man. So in other words, are you a righteous person? All the Jews, the rightful people, you know, the... Uh, 
The prophets are called gods and the sons of God, he are gods and all of you are the children of the Most High. In that sense he says, I am. But now since the guy was looking for trouble, he said, what proof do we need more? Because there was no way of convicting him any other way. So he starts performing. But you note what he did. As soon as the same people go to Pilate, they change the charge. Art thou the Christ, the son of the living God? He said, I am. Art thou the Christ? He is the Christ. Son means a righteous person of the living God. He says, yes. But the same expression, Christ, when they told Pilate, he says, he's claiming to be Christ a king. Here, they said, he's claiming Christ a God. So, you can see on the very face of it, that this is hook or by crook. They want to do away with the man because they didn't like him. This is it. Um, thank you for your answer. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not going to say anything. I was thinking about saying something naughty, but I'm not going to do that. Thank you very right. much. Many thanks. Could I have the next question? Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Didot, uh, I would like to express myself, you know, clearly that I, you know, Glad to be here tonight, you know, to listen to you. And about what's, what's going out is that I do agree that there are tons of sons of God. And that the Bible said that all those who have received him, they become sons of God. But according to the, uh, uh, what we are talking about is tonight, that I want to ask you that the Bible said that great is the mystery of the God led. That God is manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirits. See on angels preaching unto Gentiles, believe unto the world, and receive up into glory. Would like to explain where that scripture is? This is our friend Paul talking, I take it. See, this is Paul. Look, when I ask the Christian, who are you following? Who is your master? You say, Jesus. I say, what does Jesus say? Look, a learned man of the Jew comes to Jesus. Mark chapter 12, verse 29, I think. And it says, Master, what commandment is the first of all? Look, simple language they are talking. What commandment is the first of all? The most important thing in faith, what is it? And Jesus answers and says unto him in the Hebrew language, Shama Israel Adonai Elohainu Adonai Echad. It means, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Could you remain seated, please, brothers? We're going to end very soon. Please. So he repeats word for word what was given by Moses 1300 years before, without the change of a dot. Why should a learned man of the Jew go to Jesus, he is described as a scribe, means a learned man. He goes to Jesus and respectfully says, Rabbi, in the Hebrew language, he said, Rabbi, master, teacher, bishop. What commandment is the first of all? Why should a learned man go to another learned man and ask the simplest of question which any Jewish child could have answered 2000 years ago? It's a problem. You see, like you are a mathematician, you go to Einstein, the master mathematician, and you ask him what is 2 plus 2? Does it make sense? No. Unless he has gone off somewhere fundamentally in his calculations. So you're trying to draw his attention and say, wait a minute. Einstein, I respect you, you're a great man, but what is 2 plus 2, sir? Not that he doesn't know what is 2 plus 2. So this learned man asking Jesus, what command was the first of all? Why did he ask him in the first place? Number two, the reply that he gave. This was 1300 years old. Why does he repeat? Why didn't he say, for there are three that bear witness in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. That's the real answer that he should have given according to Christendom. Christendom's answer of the first commandment is, if I asked any learned Christian, what is the first commandment? Oh, he can rattle it off. The first is, hear O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. But if I asked you, what is your first commandment? Not what is the first commandment, what is yours? You are puzzled. Anybody would be. You see, so what I mean is, the importance that you ought to give to the first commandment, what are you giving to? Because you, when you were born, if you were born a Christian, you were baptized in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Am I right? If you are a Trinitarian. I'm a Christian, but yeah. I'm not born in the titles. No, no, are you a Trinitarian?